Saturday, May the 19th, 2018, the day of the uh, Royal Wedding and the Cup Final. So consequently I've come as far away from those as I could possibly get today and gone east into Essex, where today on this glorious day I'm going to undertake a uh, 13 mile circular of Langdon, which is essentially a community of Basildon really. As I say, the weather's glorious. It's about uh, 12.30 now. So I'm anticipating around five hours of walking. About 18, 19 degrees today. Perfect walking weather. Bit of a breeze. Not too much to speak of, but just enough to take the heat off, which is lovely. Let's press on. This is uh, Free Walk 114. Okay, so I've just left the station, crossed over a footbridge, and I'm now following the bridleway next to the road on my left here. I presume this is the horse blocking barrier that we ignore into trees after 340 metres. There's our onward journey ahead at the four-way junction. Red top pole through the gate. Very pleasant thus far. Plenty of chiff chaffs and black caps singing. Now we're away from the road and Langdon. Entering the uh, nature reserve. Looks like we're uh, on a Basildon Health Walk or just crossing it. As I say, we're on onwards and upwards. Appropriately enough on this uh, sovereign day, we're going up Gladstone Road. Little Wren, strongest voice in the bird world, so I believe. At the uh, juncture where this log is, you have a couple of options pathwise. I'm going to continue straight on the path with the clearings involved. Gladstone Road is uh, a wild sidewalk by the looks of it. Interestingly, the bluebells unfortunately are on their last legs here. Their few short weeks of existence has once again come, come to an end. Very sad. Likewise, the uh, white wooden enemies, I haven't seen any of those today either. Now, following the wider forest path. Surrounded by screaming squirrels. There you go. Probably some youngsters. That they're uh, protecting. So unfortunately the nameplate has disappeared but it was supported by the Heritage Lottery Fund and Hansen. Water reservoir just behind the fence here. Crossing over a fairly busy road here. Okay, this stone marks the indistinct path through the wood 15 metres from the car park. So pay attention to that, otherwise you'll miss it as I did, particularly in the summer when it's heavily covered by this cow parsley. Got a tree down here just before the stile, which is not going to be easy to get across, I can tell you. The stile's just beyond in the distance there. Even the stile is in a bit of a mess. Essex County Council, get your act together. 
now come out into a large field continue up its left hand side here I'm having trouble finding this style referred to in the text the farm buildings referred to in it in the text that is look like they're now residential so up there is actually a private road there's some holiday cottages in the old barns but I can't find either style out of that field so I've had to climb over a gate and I'm hoping that this is uh, Westley Lane now I am back on a health walk somehow just in front of this uh, large pig's sty which is called Humbug Peach I think Piggy's house He's a big old beast, isn't he? Just been reading about pigs in uh, my Countryman magazine and how they have an influence on site uh, on the sighting of churches back in the day. Some people revere the meat, clearly. Some don't. I'm not sure how this has worked out but I have got back on track because there's footpath 176 referred to in the text and there's the metal field gate so uh, that's our onward journey but as I say very confusing at that point needs sorting out be the sign that was missing over the other side a minute ago Langdon Willow Park Nature Reserve same sponsors that's an old notice that's been taken down uh, that should have been taken down rather two years out of date so I'm stood next to the bench Kingston Ridge viewpoint not much of a view at the moment because of the uh, foliage probably is in winter mind but I wouldn't want to be doing this walk in winter which is why partially why it's been left so long to be done I believe it's far better done in the summer well how I've got here I don't know because the instructions are not massively clear but uh, I know I'm on track because this is referred to in the text as is this high wire fence the campsite over the other side Having come out of the wood, we turn right up this gravel path. Beware of bikes on this path because it's shared usage, part of the NCN network. This one being Route 65. Sorry, got that completely wrong. Route 13 of the NCN network. Very rare sound just now. Cuckoo. Shame. Sounds like he's not going to sing again. But that is only the second cuckoo I've heard this year. One I hear on a daily basis near where I live. And here. Down at Langdon. It's ridiculous that it's such a rare bird now that uh, you have to stop and wait for it to sing to capture that magical sound. Anyway, we're not going to hear it by the sounds of it. I notice all these fields have got names. Past hog, here's cobblers. In fact, it's not cobblers, it's cobblier. Definite cuckoo territory as well. Turn left at this marker post four-way path junction okay just cross dry street and now pass in Providence Orchard if you want to google that Can just about hear the A13 humming in the distance now. 
unfortunately. Otherwise very pleasant thus far, surprisingly. Dry Street Memorial Church. As we wander up this narrow bridleway and as you can see just behind the memorial church the towers of Basildon turn left here at uh, pole number 19 four-way footpath junction the wonderful smell of the May will soon be gone as well I do hate it when May disappears the month that is as we approach the uh, summer solstice old black cap singing in the background there So now about to enter Langdon Hills Country Park, just turning right downhill. Some uh, pretty industrial views here of the River Thames and beyond into Kent, North Downs. The old docks over there. So as you can see this gate has got the information about Langdon Hills Country Park on it. Pretty impressive views on the other side as well. Albeit the drone of the A13 is quite incessant now. Buzzard. Now entering Martin Hole Wood. Pleasant views across the valley here at the top of Martin Hole Wood. Then splendid views across the horizon here. <whistles> Reflecting the uh, social history of the area. So by all accounts, I'm stood on One Tree Hill and uh, the views are of the new refineries and the new deep water port, Shellhaven. The mason room's closed today. It's interesting, absolutely incredible for this time of year. All these sightings at Langdon Hills Country Park, no one has seen a cuckoo. I heard one, didn't see it, but it's absolutely an indictment of the times that a cuckoo has not been seen. 
I was talking to my little uh, niece the other day. She didn't even know what a cuckoo was. Six years old, she's never heard one. Growing up with a legacy like that, it's just ridiculous. Nice environmentally friendly picnic site here, but it's a tad early for me. I'm going to try and hold out to Horndon Church. Two o'clock at the minute, or thereabouts. Lunch spot here. In memory of Betty Fry. I'm very tempted, Betty, but I've got to press on. These are the views that Betty would have enjoyed. So we ignore the obvious path into the wood which is Northlands Wood. Wonderful how the wildlife flourishes in these meadows when they're left. Wonderful to see. Particularly as we're so close to the massive industry of the oil refineries, not so far away. Passing a number of benches on my right, dedicated to various people. More pleasant woodland walking now away from the heat of the uh, afternoon, early afternoon sun. It's not a problem anyway today, it's beautiful. Nice chill breeze. Well it's not chill, it's cooling. Absolutely wonderful day. All those people down at Windsor are going to be having a wonderful time. And again tonight at Wembley. There's some young great spotted up there. Mother's just flown off, or father's just flown off to get some food. Waiting for it to return. Wonderful. Close to post number 12. This is the onward journey. Squeeze through this little gap in the hedge. Not following the obvious paths. Taking a right here on footpath 198. Down this way. I saw pictures taken by people who did this walk a month ago and indeed this is a very muddy section of the walk or can be. Thankfully today it's dried up but it just shows how quickly all that water disappears. Now walking to the right of a rape field which again per the photos I just referred to was in bloom three weeks ago obviously ahead of the rape that I walked last week in Ashwell. Hill over there on the right. And our earlier journey over there behind us path across the rape field there following footpath 86 is in fact shortcut one.
taking it into the wood. So more pleasant woodland walking. Wonderful. So ignore that signage down there on the right as we come to the edge of the wood, 350 metres on. But do turn left here. Following the yellow marker. I must admit these footpaths are very well cleared inside the wood. Very interesting. Views back over the woodland we've just walked through. So that was Stan's walk apparently. The one back down into the wood that I've just come from. So there's the uh, lunchtime destination. Horndon on the hill. There's a lot of pigeon attacks around this corner of this field. Must be easy hunting territory. Not sure why the corn hasn't grown in this uh, corner of the field. To excuse the pun. Looks like it's been bleached. Weed killer. So the question here is do you cross over this earthen bridge because it doesn't look like any obvious path down the side of that hedge or do you stay on this uh, weed killer side I think you stay on the weed killer side myself but that would contradict what's on the post because when you look on the other side of the post there's a direction on this side of the field boundary i.e. the opposite side to the weed killer field Okay. Strange how they haven't maintained this path, having uh, lawn mowed almost the, the other side of it. And as you can see, maybe that's why they've weed killered that side. Maybe they're going to shift the path over that side, I don't know. But I am on the right path because I can see that other people have traipsed through this as well. Okay, doing a left here along the farm track towards the A13. There and clearly audible. Views back from a point next to the A13. this head separating me from the A13 here. Worst part of the walk today. Two and a half right here across the field. But no footpath is evident on the ground. So the farmer's messed up here. There is the white top pole though. Clearly next to a river here. Interestingly, someone's cut down the shrubs here on the other side. So why haven't they cleared the path across? Strange. So we come out of the wood and we haven't got to walk across the rape field as I did last week in Ashwell. I must admit, I've been pretty impressed with, uh, I assume this is Essex Ramblers that are maintaining these footpaths. Very good job, Mr. Coffin. He's the same chap, I believe, that's behind the um, level crossing saga, which uh, clearly I'm still awaiting to hear the results of. Got to save those level crossings. Recommended lunchtime stop, the bell.
a Charrington's pub. Very close to the bell, you've got what looks like a new restaurant. High class one, Ostler's. Google that for more information. The alternative is the Swan, 75 metres further on. Sounds like it's a music pub though. Unless they're just celebrating the wedding. Self-explanatory. Okay, my lunchtime respite. Some Peter and some Paul. Somewhere behind these trees. Lovely chaffinch song. Right in front of me is Interesting church. Well, that's quite amazing. No seats in this churchyard. And uh, it's locked. So I'm going to have to make do with something else to sit on. This will do me. Right. Lunch has been had. Now I've got to, uh, lunch is about seven miles in by the way, uh, so six more to do, take me three hours to get this far, so uh, not terrific pace, anyway, let's press on. So here's the views along uh, footpath 214, now we head back pretty much to where we were about an hour ago but then branch off for a different route back so pay attention here because we cross this field of rape coming off the main path though it appears that Essex Ramblers are doing very good work with all the furniture uh, on this walk, the styles and so on the farmers are not playing ball with the paths across the fields because the white top footpath marker post is over the other side of the field yet there's no path government need to have a word with these farmers because they're paid to clear these paths same again in <coughs> this field albeit that the path is a little more obvious but the farmer should be clearing it. Looks to me like the footpath has been diverted here to suit the landowner. So we've got to walk round the field now. Lots of field margins to walk along at the moment, which is okay. The path's been a little bit uh, haphazard in places thus far since lunch plenty of swallows around picking up bits of mud where the um, ground is wet which it is in a couple of places this stand certainly gets about lovely collection of buttercups here great to see these meadows left to the wild again What a lovely afternoon it's turning out to be. Back inside woodland again. 
onward journey now. Footpath 32, Old Hill Avenue. Just as well we're not going to One Tree Hill. Because that footpath looks well overgrown and uh, blocked. Essex Council. Though you're doing a good job generally, some of your footpaths are not up to the mark. Now following more field boundaries. Moving away from the noisy A13 so that's good. Views back towards the Thames, Canvey Island and so on. First time I've seen that this year. The old, um, is it dog rose or wild rose? One or the other. I think there's a subtle difference. But anyway, it's out early. Lovely to see. Beats rhododendron, which is probably uh, out in abundance at the moment down in my old workplace, Sheringham Park. What a wonderful sight that is. A field of buttercups about a metre high. And flying above them, swallows everywhere. Just goes to show what happens when you let Mother Nature do its own thing. And don't spoil it with chemicals. Take note, Bayer Monsanto. Continuing on, footpath 33 towards South Hill. And I noticed a few minutes ago that the roof of the house called Wakefields, which is a nice architect design place, modern, has got a, a very eco-friendly roof. It's got a wild flower meadow essentially on the roof. Brilliant. Didn't want to film it because there were people who were present. Pretty sure that screaming up there is uh, young buzzards. Heard it a couple of times on this walk today. Very nice mix, deciduous wood this. A couple of conifers in here as well, natives. Talk of the devil a minute ago. There is some rhododendron in someone's garden, mind. But I bet that'll soon be escaping over the fence into this uh, native territory. See, so here's another one the footpath to Langdon Hills. Footpath 154. It's been nicely maintained and manicured, yet some haven't. No rhyme nor reason to it. I also noticed that they're very vigilant about the barbed wire next to stiles, i.e. forcing people over the stile rather than allowing them by it. And I haven't seen any sort of the, the uh, aluminium kissing gates that I'm familiar with. See, someone's been along here with a strimmer or something to that effect. Cleared all the vegetation, but I wonder if they've reported this, which is clearly blocking the path. Lovely vista as we come out towards Langdon Hills. Wonderful evening. Do love these meadows, buttercup meadows. Just like Daisy Yore. Just stood by Langdon Hall Farm. Some distant views there of, I'm not sure what.
pretty high up here for Essex anyway. Yes, the text refers to this fallen tree and these boardwalks. Very pleasantly surprised at how much woodland walking has been today. Wasn't expecting that. Wonderful. And uh, of course, this time of evening now, as it's getting on, you get all the bird song. Lovely. El song thrushes now. Still on my way to uh, Plotlands, the former bungalows and chalets built at the turn of the 19th century and into the 20th century. Little toad there, happy amongst the uh, last morsel of mud. Common toad, I believe. Yep, here we are on the right track. I was beginning to wonder because it seemed like a long 660 metres. Information panel here about um, Hawthorne Meadow and Tom's Orchard. Not sure what that's all about. Remnants here of uh, the old chalets. Incredible. There is the uh, last remaining Plotlands cottage. Now serving as a museum. What an amazing story. East Enders came out of London apparently, acquired this old abandoned agricultural land, built these cottages on them. Common sense. This one called The Haven. Wonderful. So there he is, old Brock, and this is part of the Peter Rabbit Woodland Trail, organised by uh, Essex Wildlife Trust. Information panel here about the Plotlands. I'd Google that for further information. There's Sedge, and as uh, with the Hitching Circular walk, Sedge warblers are present. As you can hear. There's the visitor center. This is the recommended tea stop, but as you can see, long since closed for me. Onward journey now is towards the Lang uh, Langdon Lake and Meadows. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle? No, I don't think so. At Langdon Lake and Meadows. Whew. 
onward journeys right. Good old Jemima. There is the lake. Used to be an old uh, quarry, I believe. Brickworks were around this area. Information panel here about Langdon Living Landscape. The last section is uh, pretty much like the day started. A series of bridleways tucked behind houses. But uh, at least that avoids walking along traffic laden roads. So here we are, six hours, 13 and a half mile later. Very decent walk that was. Pleasantly surprised by the amount of woodland walking in it as well, bearing in mind their location. So, free walk 114 completed, highly recommended. Weather helped as well.